Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is in a cross between F1 generation it is found that the extreme phenotype occurs about 1 out of every 16 of spring. The number of loci that control this trait is and if you think that you can solve this problem I recommend you to pause video here try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And uh, here is how we are going to solve this problem. So uh, we told that uh, we have to cross F1 generation. So in a cross between F1 generation. Or in other words, uh, we self pollinate F1 generation. Basically, in parental generation, we have. Um, something that looks like this we have two parents so parent one and parent two parent one genotype could be one extreme for example small a small a small b small b and small c small c and parent two genotype can be another extreme for example capital a capital a capital b capital b and capital c capital C. Uh, in such problems we have additive trait. What does it mean? For example, uh, that means that this genotype would produce very small plants and this genotype would produce very tall plants. Uh, I can use just any fictional numbers. For example, let's assume that uh, one recessive allele would add one centimeter to the uh, tallness of the plant. So here we know that this allele would add one centimeter. This one also would give one centimeter and this and this and this and this. And uh, each dominant allele would add say two centimeters to the tallness of the plant. So this allele would give two centimeters and this and this and this and this and this. So if we add all these additive alleles, we are going to get here 6, so 6 centimeters uh, would be a tallness of parent 1. And here we have 6 alleles, each would give 2 centimeters to the tallness, so uh, this plant would be 12 centimeters. So uh, when we cross two parents of these two extreme genotypes we are going to get uh, F1 generation or filial 1 generation. So this were parental generation and this is going to be F1 generation. And as you see for example for the gene A we have here three genes or three allelic pairs. One allelic pair, second allelic pair and third allelic pair. And the same is here. Uh, gene A, gene B and gene C. Gene A, gene B and gene C. Because organisms are deployed, uh, each allele present in two copies. And parent 2 can give to the progeny in F1 generation only dominant allele for the gene A. So only dominant allele, there is no other choice. Both of his alleles are dominant. And parent 1 only can give recessive allele A. And the same is true for the rest of the uh, genes. So F1 generation would have um, three genes that is going to be heterozygous. So one dominant allele would come from the parent two and each recessive allele uh, for each gene would come from parent one. And as you see it is very to, very easy to predict that um, here we would have two centimeters, one centimeter, two centimeters, one centimeter, two centimeters and one centimeter. Once again, when we add all these additive alleles, 
we are going to get 2 plus 1, 3, plus 2, 5, plus 1, 6, plus 2, 8, plus 1, 9. So all the F1 generation plants would be uni uniform. All of them would be heterozygous for all three loci. And all of them would be uh, 9 centimeters tall. But if we cross F1 generation among itself, uh, we can call it self-pollinate. So what basically that means that we have to uh, cross this genotype with the same genotype with capital A small a, capital B small b, and capital C small c. And uh, of course this plant, because it is the same genotype as this one, also would be 9 centimeters. So what we can expect in uh, F2 generation and uh, we know that this is just a fictional example that I show here. Uh, we don't know uh, whether this trait controlled by three genes or three allelic pairs, just like I'm showing in this example. This can be two, this can be one allelic pair, or this can be four. So this is just uh, I'm showing you here for example how additive traits works. So you would be able to solve such problems even if you would forget formula that I'm going to give you right now because you would know the logic behind the problem and even if you forget the formula you still would be able to figure out uh, the solution of the problem but this would make take uh, a little bit longer. And here is a formula. So formula is one half raised n and squared. So using this formula we can solve this problem and we have to balance this formula with information that is given that extreme phenotype is one out of every 16 offspring. So 1 out of every 16. So we put 1 out of 16 on the left side and the formula that I show above goes here. And N stands for the number of loci that control this trait. So uh, what next we are going to do, we have to find decimal number here on the left side. 1 divided by 16 equals to 0 0.0625 and the same formula goes on the right side. Squared and now, in order to get right of this square, we have to take a square root on both sides. So we have to take square root from the left side and from the right side. And what we will have on the left side would be 0 0.25. And on the right side we are going to have one half raised n. And now, uh, of course, it is very easy for us to solve this problem, but one step is left. We have to find reciprocal of this number and this number. What is a reciprocal? This is such a number that uh, when we multiply this number by its reciprocal we are going to get 1 and when we multiply this number by its reciprocal we are also going to get 1 and this is very easy uh, in other words we have to divide 1 by this number and that means that here we are going to get 4 on the left side 
and reciprocal of the one half would be two. So we have to multiply one half by two and we are going to get one. So what we have on the right side would be this number and as you see now it's very easy to find n 2 in the power of 2 would equal 4 so n would equal 2 and this is going to be our answer so the straight is under control of two allelic pairs in other words uh, our two parents would look like this so parent 1 would have two allelic pairs and parent 2 also would have two allelic pairs and of course in F1 generation we are going to cross also two plants with two uh, allelic pairs and of course here we would have 4 centimeters and 8 centimeters here and uh, I will show you also how to solve such problem even if you forgot uh, the formula and here is my hint how to solve such problems and here we also would have 6 centimeters instead of uh, 9 centimeters and of course uh, 6 centimeters we would have here so 2 and 1 2 and 1 centimeters here and just remember this picture that we got here so we have two heterozygous plants for uh, both uh, genes and uh, I will show you uh, that when we cross two such parents parent 1 and parent 2 in F1 generation we are going to get one extreme phenotype out of uh, every 16 plants one very small out of 16 or one very tall as you remember genotype of parent 1 was capital A small a capital B small b and the same genotype in F1 generation were of the parent 2 so uh, how many each parent can produce different um, type of gametes so here would be the first type of gamete capital A and capital B and here is going to be second variant of the gametes and this is going to be capital A and small b and third variant here small a capital B and the fourth variant would be small a and small b and because second parent belong to the same genotype we also can list the same four different gametes for the second parent so capital A and capital B here capital A and small b here small a and capital B here and small a and small b here and when we build a Punnett square we can predict all the possible genotypes for progeny of such a cross of these two parents with the same genotypes and I am not going to fill all the table you can do it easily yourself but I just want to fill only two uh, cells so uh, this is going to be a gamete of uh, parent 1 so parent 1 here and parent 2 here so in the cell we would have capital A from 1 parent and capital A from the parent 2 and capital B capital B so as you see if 
uh, dominant allele would give two centimeters, we would have one, two, three, four, four dominant alleles, each would add uh, to the trait two centimeters, so uh, this phenotype would give us a plant that is going to be eight centimeters tall. On the other hand, in this cell, we are going to have a genotype that is small a small a and small b small b. And each recessive allele would give one centimeter to the trait. So here we would have a plant uh, whose tallness is going to be four centimeters. And of course in all the rest cells we are going to have different intermediate um, genotypes and phenotypes. For example here we would have capital A capital A and capital B small b. Or here we would have capital A capital A capital B and small b. And here for example capital A capital A and small b small b. In other words, two centimeters, two centimeters, one centimeter, one centimeter. So uh, actually this genotype here would be one extreme that would produce plants uh, that is eight centimeters tall and this genotype would give us another extreme that would produce the shortest plants that is going to be four centimeters tall and as you see here we have one two three four one two three four so we have uh, a grid four by four centimeter uh, four by four cells that means total number of cells here is 16 and this genotype that represent uh, extreme genotype would equal one out of 16 and genotype that is here that represent another extreme genotype also would equal one out of 16. So now you see that um, plant uh, whose tallness under control of two genes uh, or two uh, allelic pairs can produce extreme genotypes that equal to one out of 16. So this is proof that uh, we solved our problem correctly, but also I want to give you a hint how we can solve such problems even without uh, knowledge of this formula that I still recommend you to remember. And this is very easy. So uh, once again, uh, let me clean a little bit of space here for my final example. Uh, as you see, uh, here we have two allelic pairs, but imagine that we have uh, a trait under control of only one allelic pair. So genotype of the parent one would be capital A small a and of the parent two also would be capital A small a. And when we build a Punnett square, once again, we would have different genotypes that is going to be capital A capital A capital A small a capital A small a and small a small a here and as you see in this scenario extreme genotype would be one out of four would be uh, the tallest and also one out of four would be the smallest. So here is a tendency when trait under control of one allelic pair extreme genotype and phenotype would be one fourth. When we have two allelic pairs extreme phenotype would be one out of 16. So as you see the trend is very easy to predict. When uh, we have only one allelic pair extreme genotype would be uh, one fourth when we have trait under control of the two allelic pairs uh, extreme genotype would equal one 
sixteenths, and when we have three allelic pairs, uh, the trait would be uh, extreme genotype, extreme trait would be found in the frequency one out of sixty four. And of course, you can say that when we have uh, four allelic pairs, the trait would be found. Uh, we have to multiply this number by 4, so this is going to be 1 out of uh, 256. This is if we would have uh, a trait under control of uh, 4 allelic pairs. And once again, if we have a trait under control of 5 allelic uh, pairs, uh, we would find extreme phenotype 1 out of 1024. I'm using this table just uh, to save a space as you understand uh, these numbers don't fit uh, this table specifically but you just may uh, memorize that uh, one allelic pair would produce one quarter of the extreme genotype two allelic pairs would produce one sixteen three one sixty four four one out of two hundred fifty six and five one out of uh, one thousand twenty four it is very easy and now i think that you uh, deeply understand this problem how to solve analogous problems and even if you would forget this formula you would be able to figure out an answer just using this simple logic as I show you today. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.